and I trust them. I trust them with my life. I, I don't know if I would be here today without all of their help and their support. <laughs> they were, they were out of this world fabulous. They treated me like I was a guest more than a patient. The caregivers really are the true rock stars, aren't they? Every patient deserves and should have the care that I'm getting at Zoom. I'm cancer free because of them. With every patient, every day, Suma Health delivers personal, life-changing care. Okay, um, obviously good win for us. I uh, thought that our guys, for about 80% of the game, maybe more, I'll take a look at the film, you know, really uh, made a lot of plays at both ends of the floor. I thought we were really consistent with our effort in both halves, um, and I thought that was a good sign of us stepping in the, uh, making steps in the right direction there in terms of our mindset, our effort, and our attitude. Now, our attitude got a little wacky late. We, we obviously got a you know, take a look at that. We didn't quite close it out the last couple minutes like I wanted. You know, you know with the, you know, we lost our minds there a little bit. Uh, two or three of our guys. We'll work on, you know, growing up, getting a little more mature, and doing a better job of that. But other than that, you know, I told them in the locker room. You know, when I was younger, I might try to focus on that last minute because that was the last thing I just saw. But I was going to choose to do two things. One, uh, most imp uh, as importantly, I was going to talk about the positive things that they did for the bulk of the game at both ends of the floor. Um, we shot it well. Every player on the team had an assist. Everybody that played made positive plays. Thought we were scrappy defensively. Thought we competed on the glass. Thought we moved the ball and played well on offense. And then I also told them I had dinner with my wife tonight. And I said, I'll be darned if I'm going to allow the last minute of the game to affect that. So I'm not, and they started laughing. But, um, you know, we'll worry about that tomorrow in terms of how we can grow up and get a little bit better like we always do. But all in all, I thought it was a good effort. And I thought that uh, our focus was in the right place. We executed the game plan well and got contributions from everyone that played. The most complete game so far this season in the conference? Yeah, probably for 80 or 90 percent of it, um, for sure. You know, I thought we let our foot off the gas. Defensively, start the second half, we weren't great. They were shooting 56 percent. I took the one time out, up 16. I can't remember the time left in the game, but I kind of sensed a momentum change a little bit, George. And uh, I thought we got locked back in defensively, got some stops, and that was the key to getting us out and running and having a chance to kind of, you know, bust it open a little bit uh, and make it a little more difficult for them to come back but you know we got to learn to finish games the right way um, we weren't great at that in the last couple minutes there we've got to be a lot better we got to grow up there youth is no excuse at this point I mean guys have played quite a bit we're on game 19 on Tuesday night so they've got to you know do what we need them to do from an effort standpoint a focus standpoint attitude standpoint nonetheless again I'll come back to I thought for the bulk of the game it was pretty good I think the only Category only stack really got beat in was rebounding tonight, and I, that's for an obvious reason. You're down. <laughs> Well, I don't want to have an excuse on that because, you know, the other night we played Eastern Michigan. They got Thompson, who averages four offensive rebounds a game. Minnie's great on the glass. Bond's great on the they were, And we got 75% of the defensive rebounds and really dominated the glass defensively. And that's hard to do against Eastern. They're very good uh, in that department. We'll take a look at it, George. My guess is we probably could have got 75% tonight, too. But our blockouts, our attention to detail in that area, especially to start the game and the end of the game, was not great. And so we've got to control that a little bit. Same thing, we're not going to use our size as an excuse. Everybody can block out. If you choose when the shot goes up whether or not you're going to block out and hit or not, and we want to be a team that is really good in that area, and we have been to this point nationally and in league play, regardless of our size. Today, we weren't as great there. John, can you talk about, in, uh, yes, Jeremy got 16, but a lot of it came from the foul line. Uh, he held him to four for 10 on the field. Missed all five of his threes. Uh, he was coming in as the leading scorer in the match. Did you do anything different defensively or just uh, your basic defense? Well, I thought our team in general had a great awareness of where he was at all times, Evan, and really you know, did a great job of stopping the ball for the most part until the last few minutes there and making it hard on him to find cracks in our defense. Now. I hope people really appreciate what DeVivier does defensively. I know people talk a lot about his shooting, but when you have the ability to put a guy like Malcolm on a player like Eugene German or whoever it is, he's played so many different guys for
for us. And he has a great knack for guarding the ball and keeping it in front. And he's physically strong and he's smart. Then he at least makes the guy that he's guarding most nights, Evan, earn it. He has to earn it. And that's a great luxury, luxury to have as a coach. And uh, obviously we have great respect and appreciation that Malcolm is a two-way player. And also on Bradley, who's been one of the top rebounders in the MAC, only he has, what, uh, two boards all night and both on the defense, nothing off Yeah, we tried to make it. That was critical. It was, um, for sure, because he had been great on the offensive glass. He's long, he's athletic, he pursues balls. And I thought Jamon did a really good job on him as well. Uh, defensively is the primary matchup here today on that one. So we blocked that. Obviously, we did a good job of keeping him off the backboard. But the stints to start, which George was alluding to, the rebounding, to start the game and to end the game, you know, I didn't think we were as sharp as we needed to be blocking out. I asked Daniel this. Was it a relief to finally see him see some shots from all? You know, probably. You have to ask him that. But No, I mean for you. Nah, not really. You got to remember now, I coached at Ohio State, John Diebler. Ohio, I think you have to look. I don't want to be wrong, but I think he's the all-time leading three-point field goals made leader at Ohio State. You'd have to look back. He had one year as freshman rank. He missed, I don't know, 20-some in a row or something. You know, and we sure, sure as heck weren't going to tell John Diebler to quit shooting the ball, and we're not going to do that with Dan Utomi either. Fortunately for us, Dan's streak, uh, a string there wasn't as long as John's, uh, but John ended up obviously becoming a great shooter and a great player. Um, sometimes you go through a stretch like that, I think you just got to stay with it. More than anything else, I just kept encouraging him to continue to take open shots and letting him know how much I believe in him. He, a lot like John, is a real worker. He comes in all the time to get, in fact, there's times where I want to get him out of there so he can get fresh but he works and works and works and works and uh, I knew it was only a matter of time so I'm happy for him obviously it, it uh, helped our team win the game today no no difference in anything he, he did in the past couple days past couple days. no I mean I worked him out we worked him out the other day we'll work him out again tomorrow but we're doing that with all the guys I don't not really. I think it's just a matter of seeing one or two go in, George. And then I've, obviously once that happens, you know, for a shooter, you can kind of keep that momentum going. I thought that's what Dan did today. You're, you're five years removed from Ohio, I think it is. Yeah. And any significance to Tuesday night for you? Well, obviously it's a great place. You know, my uh, wife and I and our, ki our kids, Camden was born there. Um, you know, we have a lot of friends still there. We have a lot of great memories there. No different than all the places that, we, that we've that we been. Um, a lot of great friends, a lot of great relationships, uh, good memories. Uh, but at the end of the day, when they come in here on Tuesday night, we want to be prepared and we're going to try to play well and do everything we can to beat Ohio, you know. Once the ball tips, it's no different than when I was at Illinois. I had to play Ohio State quite a bit and coach against Thad. And once it tips, the game is the game. So um, nothing but respect and appreciation for that time there. But, you know, we're Akron Zips, and we're excited about what we're building and where we're going, and we got to see if we can take another step in the right direction on Tuesday night. John, are you surprised a little bit? Uh, we all thought, most of us did, not, uh, You've got separation in both divisions right now. Buffalo's the <laughs> Buffalo right now, and so is Toledo going into tonight. But it seems like it's like a grab bag through the rest of the conference. And it's one of those dog fights. Yeah, I mean, I sensed there was going to be more parity, 1 through 12, than even, obviously, when I was in the league the first stint. There was parity, but... 1 through 12, I've just been watching the teams on tape, Evan, as we're preparing for these games. You know, I really see it. I mean, 1 through 12. You know, not 1 through 8 or 1. I mean, 1 through 12. And it's, that's impressive. That bodes well for the league, makes every night challenging, every night competitive, and you better be ready to go because anybody can beat anybody. If your focus isn't right and your effort's not right and your attitude's not in the right place, then anybody can beat anybody. you got to be ready to play. Changing positions on us? Ten rebounds? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't changing positions. I mean, well, I played one through the four today, so. Okay. I gotta ask Daniel, what 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 the difference is for you today? And you've been struggling. We talked about it the other day. It's like and you, you didn't struggle in the first half. Mm -hmm. Or let's try this. You didn't take a lot of shots. So, mm -hmm. so, so what was the difference? Uh. Really, just coach, um, they told me to just stay aggressive, and you know I'm just trying to keep listening to them. So that's what I, that's just what I did. Continue to stay aggressive. 
Was this the most complete game of the season for you guys in your eyes? And you outshot him 53% to 40%. Um, I don't think you won the rebound battle, but given your situation with big men right now, that mm. makes sense. Yeah. But, but other than that, it's I think so. I mean, if you look at the numbers and just, I mean, yeah. I mean, ain't, ain't really no other way to put it. I think it was our best overall game as a team so far this year. Why is that? Uh, because we know we down, down some players and, you know, coaches keep telling us to play hard and play for our teammates. Uh, our backs against the walls and I think playing like that, we play well. What does not having Emmanuel and Jaden for now Due to you guys? I mean, obviously, we lose some size in the paint. We lose shot blocking. We lose some finishing at the rim. I mean, but we got to – on to the next person. So we relying on Mark a lot. We relying on Dan and play some five. We relying on Lucas. So, I mean, it means a lot that they're out. But next man up, like Coach always say. It's a smaller lineup, obviously. So, so does that help you in any way? I mean, yeah. yeah. They got to guard us, too. Okay. Yeah. How does it help you, though? I mean, just imagine a five-man guard and Dan, if we have him at the five, put, put him in a pick-and-pop situation. I mean, just it, it brings challenges to the other team as well. I mean, we're going to have challenges because we're smaller, but I think the other team will have a little bit of trouble guarding us as well. Back to your second half, Daniel. Is it a relief to have that monkey off your back, or was there ever a monkey there? Let's try that. Uh. I would say it's a relief just to see a couple of shots falling down, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to stay aggressive. How big is this, uh, after coming off a bad loss at Eastern Michigan, how big is this victory, just to, on the confidence side? I mean, we we just trying to get better towards the end of the year. So, like, we, play every, we just want to play every game the same, but obviously it's a big game, a big win for us. Uh, we was only 1-1 one, one, that game, but if you look at it, if we, we play Tuesday, if we, if we win that game, uh, not looking ahead, but if we win it, the next two games, we, we right where we need to be. We in, good, we in a good position. So, I mean, it was a start. Today was a start. So we're going to take it one, one opponent at a time and just try to fight and claw our way back to trying to, you know, get in the pitcher and one of the best teams in the map.